Hi, this is Mike from Mugs and Boxing Reviews on How To, and today we're going to answer the question, or at least go some way towards answering the question of, do older APUs work with the modern B550 and A520 chipsets? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to try and answer the question that uh, I actually do get quite a lot, and that is, do older APUs work with the modern A520 and B550 chipsets? Now, in this particular video, we're going to be concentrating mostly on the A520 chipset, being that is the most budget offering at the moment. So most of the information will pretty much translate to the B550s. There's not a great deal of difference actually in the way that they work or the bosses work. It's just the features that are actually implemented on the motherboards themselves. So what we've done is, We've got a Ryzen 3 2200G, which was one of the first of the APUs from AMD. You've got other things that slurred in the Athlon range, etc., etc. But of the actual Ryzen 3s, the 2200G was pretty much the starting place, especially in the retail sector. So what we've got is that mounted onto a Gigabyte. This is the A520M-H, which again, very much a budget entry-level board and using the A520 chipset. And I'm very pleased to announce that yes, 100% it does work. Now I'm going to go through things like what BOSS version we've got on here. Obviously today's recording date is the 20th of the 10th, 2020. This video may get released a little bit later than that, but just to give you a kind of a reference or a timestamp, that is when this is recorded. And currently, if I open up the uh, CPU Z, I'm going to take a look and see what's going on here. The BOSS revision, I think is possibly the latest one. So we'll double check that in CPU Z. So if we look at our main board. So as you can see there, Gigabyte Technology Co. Limited. It's the A520M-H and the chipset's AMD, obviously, Ryzen SoC. And the BIOS revision there is BIOS revision F10. So that is the AMD Agisa uh, Combo 2PI 1.0 plus 8.1 or whatever it is. But anyway, you can see on the screen probably better than I can from here. So that BIOS was released on the uh, 10th of the 9th, 2020, or 9th of the 10th, 2020, whichever you want to look at. I think it's probably an American date, so it's the 10th of the 9th, 2020. So it's a relatively modern BIOS. And from what we can see, this chip is actually working absolutely fine. If you go into the CPU tab, you can see there quite clearly, it's the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. Uh, it's correctly recognized it. All the uh, correct details are there. And it actually does run particularly well. I was expecting it to either run slightly kind of hobbled or a little bit less than what it should do, but it actually is in fact the exact opposite. And normally if you run Cinebench R20 on a Ryzen 3 2200G system, normally you get around about 1300 points in uh, version 20 of Cinebench. And if you open up this one here, this is one I ran uh, quite recently. So this has got a CPU score of 1343 which is a little bit above, and I have actually run it a couple of times after doing a Windows update, and this actually is the slowest score I've had so far. I've had a, a 1360, a 1366, etc. But this, at the moment, as where it stands. So it's a little bit above what it should be. It does seem to run very well. I did actually also run the PC Benchmark Suite as well, which isn't really a great way of comparing, but actually for working out if your system's running comparatively with exactly the same systems, actually is pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly run that now just to give you a quick look at that. Something we should touch on, I guess, is temperatures, thermals, and voltage, etc. Now, I've been using CPU-Z on this now for a few minutes just to try and generate some heat, and it's, it's gradually creeping up in temperature. At the moment, we're at roughly about 57 degrees. We have registered a low of 25 degrees C on the processor, and this is in a 22 degrees C room. So just with the stock Wraith cooler, the Wraith Stealth, and using one of these, this is the IC Graphite Thermal Pads. Uh, seems to be working absolutely fine. So again, doesn't seem to be going crazy with temperatures. Uh, the voltages all look absolutely fine. The uh, boost speeds, clock speeds, etc., all seem to be absolutely fine. So at the moment, we've had maximum speeds on the CPU cores, uh, 3689, which is exactly where we want to be, so 3.7 gigahertz on the boost. The minimum clock speeds have been around about the 1400, so it certainly is doing the cooling quiet or the kind of uh, precision boost so it's clocking right down when it doesn't need to use that sort of power. And at the moment, with all the cores being loaded, we're at uh, roughly 3.6 gigahertz, which is, again, pretty much bang on where we should be. So yeah, I've got no real issues with the, uh, with the voltages. Looks good. Okay, so looking at our screen, so this is the uh, user benchmark, which I've just ran, like I said. It isn't um, a perfect application by any means, but certainly, again, like I said, for comparing like with like, it does work very, very well. 
So as you can see, the gaming uh, standard is 20%, desktop 78%, and workstation 18%. This is pretty much exactly where I was expecting it to see. We've got green lamps on PC status, processor, boot drive, memory, and OS version. And actually, I suppose I should uh, tell you what other parts we've got in here. So for the boot drive, we're using the silicon power. This is, I think it's the A A60 from silicon power. It's a 512 gigabyte M.2 drive in the PCI Express slot. RAM wise, we've got two sticks of Corsair. This is their LPX. This is DDR4 3000, uh, which actually seems to work really well with this setup. So we're using that uh, Corsair power supply, CX750M, motherboard, like we said, Gigabyte A520M-H, and literally we're just using the HDMI port straight into the monitor, uh, although it is going through the HD60 to capture the information, which uh, hopefully is uh, nice and crisp and clear. But essentially that is pretty much it, um, other than that Logitech keyboard and mouse just to control stuff. So very, very basic setup here, with, again with the Ryzen 3 2200G. So as you can see, PC uh, performing way above expectations. We're in the 86th percentile. And as you can see there, it's, uh, it's towards the top end of other tests which have been done with a similar processor. So that's really good. And that is with actually some other stuff running in the background as well. So if we close down some of those tasks, I'm sure we can get that percentile a little bit higher. Moving down to the graphics, again, even though it is particularly slow, it has gone towards the pretty much the top end of that, which is excellent. Memory-wise, again, we're in the uh, upper percentage there. We've got an outstanding result there with the, uh, sorry, with the uh, storage rather than the memory. Even the memory itself has actually done fantastically well, again, in the 98th percentile, so that's very impressive indeed. So overall, the system is uh, performing considerably better than I was expecting to. So excellent works really well so if you are considering getting a, um, a modern motherboard to put a modern processor on but maybe you want a placeholder cpu to get the job done in the meantime like an apu such as the ryzen 3 2200g i'm pretty sure this is going to apply with the uh, 3200g as well and also the slightly higher models up the chain as well if you want to see specifically a different processor test on this such as the uh, 200ge or the Athlon 3000, then please do let us know in the video description below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.